Good afternoon, good morning, and good day, and welcome back to Recusant Revelries, where, uh, for those of you who are turning in, tuning in for the first time, good lord, this series is a challenge run where I level up only using the runes I gather from invasions. So if by chance I accidentally come upon any runes in any other way, all the runes have to be sacrificed to the Serpent God here in Volcano Manor. Now, um, here's the thing, guys. The montages, I, I can't do them anymore. I genuinely, I, I, it's too much. It's too hard. Oh my God, what the f- Jeez, oh, this f- Round one, fight!
Boys, welcome back. And uh, yeah, despite my best efforts, uh, as you guys saw, we had to, I had to endure uh, making another montage. But that being said, uh, the build is slowly coming together. Uh, it's starting to make more sense. Uh, you know, we're here, but we still have a very long way to go before being done. Anyways, uh, here are the next invasions, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Take care. See you later. All right, so here we go. Um, you might be wondering, hey, Buppo, why am I hearing Skyrim music? And also, hey, Buppo, why was this transition so, um, not smooth? Well, let me tell you. Um, I'm a silly goose. I'm a, I'm a fucky duck, okay? I'm an absolute dumbass. I literally started invading, and not only did I forget to turn the music back on in the game to have, you know, ambient uh, invasion music, I forgot to record the first invasion. And you're not going to believe the first invasion now that I'm going to recount it to you. Now, the only proof I'm going to have of being capable of doing the first invasion is going to be the last invasion in the video. So uh, stick around and see how the first invasion kind of played out through how the last invasion went because they were very, very similar. The key difference being the first invasion had two overleveled phantoms. Now they weren't super crazy overleveled. Both phantoms plus the host, so all three of the, the little gang squad there, had given me about 10k runes and I only used them to upgrade my weapons. So like my character isn't any stronger per se. Both of these weapons are plus two. I bought the upgrade materials from EG uh, kind of as a punishment for realizing I forgot to fucking hit record. And you're gonna see later in the video too, um, you see me uh, kind of do a little edit where I was basically went into the options and I uh, turned the music back on. But yeah, anyways, this was the air quotes unofficial first invasion here. Um, right after I realized I was being a dumbass, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna fight this mace, dude. And uh, you guys are gonna see, today the theme is toxicity in Elden Ring. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, my build's super fucking toxic right now. The current state of this build is not the final product, so do not think I will run this through the whole game, but I need, I need this right now to farm. I need the levels, all right? I'm gonna justify it. My toxic way of playing is going to be this, but here's the problem. If you play toxic, you get treated toxic. He disconnected, I get, not only do I not get a rune arc, I don't really care for the rune arc, I also don't get any runes. That's bullshit. How am I supposed to level up if motherfuckers keep disconnecting on me? Oh man. All right, so then we go into this next invasion and a uh, little gang squad of two here. Um, I skip all the parts where uh, it's just running around. Well, I mean, it's going to be a lot of running around. So these guys, these guys right here, not toxic per se, but these lads are sweaty. And look, 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 not, they're not bad at the game. Not at all. They are not bad at the game, but they do not want to lose, which is fair. Neither do I. But my goal isn't to gank. I'm not, I'm not doing this necessarily to, like, you know, just win. I need the levels. <laughs> I need these guys dead because I need the levels. So, I'm looking at the mage. He doesn't have too much health. He's not too much to handle. But he is strategically throwing out those spells. He's waiting until I roll, and he's genuinely trying to roll catch me with that. And that's why I'm behind this tree, because I realize that. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Meanwhile, his friend, he's absolutely protecting the mage he's not actually fighting me because look how passive he's being he's there to fight me and attack me only when i engage the mage and if i get too close so i have to strategize and think what do i do i'm getting spell spam and i don't have carry and retaliation yet if i did i could have used that to my advantage but i don't and this guy's spells they hit hard you're gonna see when i take that damage from that spell especially that that magic missile there, that glintstone fucking missile, uh, that shit hurts. That shit absolutely scrunkly dunks. But yeah, as you can see, these guys are playing super passive. Um, genuinely think, you know, sitting down while I'm playing. I mean, I have to play passive too, but the difference between me and them is uh, I'm not in a, like, they're not in a 2v1 scenario. They, they can't, like, I have to whiff punish. It's my only way to win this. And I have to avoid the spells, and I'm not gonna approach while taking- Look, look at that damage! Look at that damage! You really want think I'm gonna approach if you're hitting me that hard with those spells? No, absolutely the fuck not. Are you crazy? 
So I have to try and rely on my poison. I have to try and rely... Like, I'm thinking, okay, sleep might not work. I need some Scarlet Rot. So I need to gain some distance between these two. And uh, I was kind of shifting through my menus here. So this is me shifting through my menus. We're going to edit away from that because I just basically ran away to do it proper. And I came back. And look, they didn't chase me down. They could have killed me the whole time I was going through that menu. But like I said, their strategy is passivity. Um, not necessarily a bad thing, but it is rough. And it's also the fact that like these guys are gank squatting. Um, and also keeping all the cards in their favor. I, I don't have a co-op invader. My man didn't taunt her stung to make it a fair fight. Like, no, these guys are looking purely to win. Purely to win. And, uh, this, this was not infuriating, not a frustrating invasion, but watch, like, in the time that I was doing it, I was like, wow, this is tough. I really hope I can, uh, pull it through. So in the time I was doing it, I was like, okay, I, I can do this. I, I need this practice. I'm going to be fighting lots of ganks like this in the future, especially at higher levels and, like, more meta levels, because that's what people do. Um, and my build, it's its looking a little twinked out right now, let's be real. I have a regen armor, it's, it's a heavier armor. Uh, I have, uh, you know, Scarlet Rod, I have Sleep, I have Poison. Like, I have the tools of the scum, okay? I do, but again, I believe I am justified in my use of these tools. Simply based on the fact that, like, I'm doing it to level up. It is a challenge run. And I'm not bullying new players, like, I'm fighting these guys, right? Like, I take on every challenge that's presented to me. And I'm trying to show this as unfiltered as possible, so... That first invasion that we missed breaks my heart because I, I wanted it in the video. It was a good fucking invasion. It was actually the best invasion of my whole night. And uh, I, I'm really saddened that I couldn't show you guys that. But that being said, like the last invasion, honestly, I'd argue is almost as good. Almost just as good. It went pretty well. In fact, most of the invasions tonight went really, really well. But these guys, man, they were tough. They were tough. I had to pull everything in my arsenal to try and get them. And right here, I'm like, oh, shit. I'm fucked. Uh, I feel like that one should have killed me. But Miyazaki blessed me with a, a little bit of packet loss there. But it doesn't matter. And, uh, yeah. This is where I get pointed down at by uh, the Phantom wearing heavy armor and a broadsword. Kind of silly to me, but it is what it is. We'll get him next time, boys. Speaking of next time. Oh, baby. Is that the homie who disconnected from me earlier? All right. Well, I got a cool hat and I got a sleep sword. Let's see how this fight plays out this time. So this is what's boggling me. This is what's interesting to me. This guy is clearly doing a taunter's ton run because, like, there's no co-op phantom in sight. So, like, he's using the Tantra's tongue. He's intentionally wanting to be invaded. So, I'm like, okay. Well, I figure this guy's probably looking to, like, you know, actually have a fight. So, he's he should expect, especially at this low level, for invaders to come in and have builds that uh, are, are tough to deal with, right? And that's what I've got. I've got a build that's very tough to deal with. I've got Poison. I've got Scarlet Rot. And I'm going to I'm going to spam until he gets status affected. I also have bleed on the Scarlet Rot Rapier only because I haven't upgraded it yet, so it's my only source of damage with it. But uh, right here, he disconnects again, and I'm like, okay, I know Scarlet Rot and Poison is a death sentence at this level, but like I'm level 30 plus right now. This isn't like level 10. This is level 30. What the fuck is going on? Why would you do a Taunter's Tongue run? If you're just going to disconnect every time you lose anyways. I mean, that's twice in a row. That's the same guy from the start of the invasions here. Waste of time. Waste of time. Also, hey, look, an invisible phantom. Not cheating, just a glitch. Okay, I want this to be clear. I, I've read it up. I've uh, looked up um, other, uh, you know, top YouTubers' opinions on this. And it turns out um, there's a bit of a disconnect. Uh, it's an Elden Ring server problem. So uh, instead of lag, what you get is an invisible phantom. And as you can see, this uh, disconnect was probably not intentional. It was just bad connection altogether. And the uh, invisible homie, you know, was probably causing issues on the server there. But uh, this guy's pretty cool. My, my man Wolverine over here, no idea what his name is. Like, try, try something. I, I can't read. I can't read when I'm in Adobe, all right? I, I keep it at a quarter quality just to be able to record the, the voice with the least lag as possible on the program. But uh, I'm going to need to find a better alternative so I can actually read my opponent's names. <laughs> but hey, is what it is. Uh, okay, so this is interesting. My man's got a big axe, no health. 
He's got heavy armor, though, so he's got poise. And uh, that's going to be a little bit of a problem in this invasion. Also, my man with the claws, no one uses claws, and uh, I admire him. 10 out of 10, good build. Makes me happy. Also, both homies casting fire. Like, these are these are people just going through the game. These are people having fun. Uh, my build feels a little unfair against them, but that being said, they're putting up a great fight, and uh, I'd say these guys are pretty good players. Uh, hats off to them. Not the best, honestly, you know, obviously, but uh, they're good. They're good. They're 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 putting in an effort. They're fighting the invader. You know, this is this is the type of uh, boys going through the game and really giving it their all. And uh, you know what? I deep down, I kind of wanted them to beat me. I wanted them to win. Also, you're gonna see me not take advantage of that so many times. And the reason why is because I don't want to kill the host. I need the levels. I have to kill the phantoms first, right? Because, not necessarily because it's part of the challenge run, but it's more advantageous, advantageous for me. I can't speak. Um, I had two coffees and I still can't speak. But yeah, it's more advantageous for me if I kill the phantoms. Because the more phantoms and players I kill, the more levels I'm going to get, the more runes I'm going to farm. And that's what I need right now. I absolutely need runes to farm. Now, um, is it, uh, is it the most efficient way to farm runes? No, but that's part of the challenge. Right? That's the whole point here. And uh, th this is what makes the game a little more interesting. So if ever I get into a rune farmer situation, um, it's as beneficial for me. It becomes as special. It becomes as beneficial for me as it is for them. Sure, I can't kill the host, and sure, they're they're playing in an absolute scummy way. I mean, they're not even playing the game. But in a situation where uh, rune farming is a thing, I can farm all the blues that come into the world as well as the reds, and basically use that to my advantage. Same thing goes with over leveled phantoms. Also, uh, yeah, roll catching is fun with uh, thrust weapons, uh, I'm just gonna say it. Uh, same thing goes with spears, uh, great thrusting swords, as well as great spears. I absolutely love roll catching, it's my favorite part of this game. So it, it just, it tickles, it tickles that part of my brain. Oh, and uh, look, look at this, this guy's strategy right now to fight me is really interesting. Um, so, he goes up the hill, and he starts using the elevation to his advantage, and I'm like, okay, what, what, what are you doing here, homie? And look at that! Look at that! If he kept doing that, he probably would have beat me. But, like, I realize what he's doing, and I'm trying to cut him off as much as possible. But we go around the loop again, he goes for the jumping attack, and I'm like, damn, my guy's got a strat. But, uh, he shouldn't have been that aggressive. A big bow to them, though, because uh, they played really well, and honestly, I wish they beat me. And look at that! Blue coming in right on time, as usual. 10 out of 10. Uh, good job, Blue. Um, you probably noticed uh, he invaded the world way sooner. Oh my goodness, is this the invasion that I'm thinking of? Oh, I, I recorded this the other day, so I'm trying to remember how these go. And, uh, okay, no, it's not. This, <laughs> this is a different invasion. So the two homies are down here, doing their thing. I forgot what about what I was talking about earlier. And check it out, there's a there's a, an invisible mage, alright? We got the same issue, I'm like, what the hell hit me? And uh, that's when I see the spells coming, I'm like, okay, where's the mage? Where's the mage? I almost died here, I was like, it's over for me. And that's when I realized, oh, Fuck, there's an invisible mage. There's an invisible phantom. Well, that's okay. Only one to deal with. Now I'm like, how the fuck am I gonna fight this guy? How do you fight what you cannot see? I have to imagine where he's at based on the spells, but like, I am, I have the worst step perception apparently, because I'm like, where the fuck is he? How the fuck am I gonna hit him? Um, this is a problem. This is a problem. So I figure, okay, you know what? I'll focus the host and see what happens. And uh, yeah, it looks like at the very moment I focused the host, he got an error. He got a disconnection error. I'm like, hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> so now it's a 1v1 scenario versus the host. Um, I'm very interested in his build. He's got the parrying shield and the flail. You don't see that very often. Flails are kind of shit in this game, but that being said, you know, he's committing to his character. He's committing to the look. And uh, I really, really like what this guy's build is. It looks cool. It's got some fashion souls to it. We've got the roll catch with the weapon art there, and this is why I got that weapon. It's going to be stacking damage, and it's going to be roll catching. So very, very excited to, because this sword is going to be the core component of this build. Now, um, right here, 
Uh, we've got a scenario. My man's wearing the same arm, ar armor as I am, so I'm like, okay. And Nefeli Lu is here. This is not a player. This is an NPC invader, as you can see from uh, her AI not really reacting to me um, as a player would. Uh, but that made me think. Oh, and my man's floating. He's got the, uh, you know, uh, ninja art of lag. Uh, not sure how to deal and process with that. But then something crosses my mind. How many runes do you get for killing Nefeli Lu? Because clearly she's stacked like an overlevel phantom. Like beating her would probably net me a bunch of runes. So I stop focusing the host here, and I am now absolutely you know, on a mission to kill Nefeli, but here's the problem. Nefeli can do that, which costs a lot of health. It is very scary, and I'm like, okay, how am I, how am I gonna do this? Well, we have to get her poisoned, we have to get her rotted. I thought I was dead here. We have to get her poisoned, we have to get her rotted, and maybe we can make her bleed. So whatever the host is doing, I'll let him do. I guess he's trying to summon someone else for help or something. But uh, me and the giant, uh, we're, we're after Nefeli Lu. We want her soul. We want her. We want her dead. Um, this is my opportunity. And here we go. Can I make her bleed? Can I make her rot? Oh man, we are so close. Now the host is like, okay, Nefeli's in horrible danger. I need a helper. She's out of healing though. So you know what? This this is my opportunity. This is my chance. So I am focusing Nefeli. And the host is, was such in a bad situation. He got absolutely murdered by. Um, uh, the giant. But we got Nefeli and no runes for it, so that kind of sucks. Also, I hope you guys noticed that Rope Snake cameo. Rope Snake, uh, long time friend of the show. Uh, love this homie. Uh, hope he's doing well. Shout outs to Ropey. Uh, anyways. <laughs> uh, going back to this. Um, this guy's build was interesting. Uh, great Lance build. Um, in a scenario where I'm absolutely uh, being the scum invader, and uh, you know, we, we gotta do what we can when we're invaders, right? This isn't a duel. We're not playing fair. That's the entire point here. Um, I am here to ruin his day, honestly. Uh, now these are memes, right? Like, it, you know, if, if you're playing Elden Ring, you know, what you, you know what you got yourself into. And this guy, he's alone, not co-oping. I have a feeling he might be doing a Taunter's run as well, especially from his playstyle. He's actually playing relatively well. Um, th this is a bit of an unfinished build. I am at a bit of an uh, unfair advantage against him, but like, you saw, you guys saw the build up to this though. Like, I didn't, I didn't just like, you know, play through the game. Uh, I played through the game at low level. I played through the game with, um, you know, only the runes that I gained from, uh, you know, doing invasions. So I'm not at necessarily at an advantage here in the grand scheme of things, but I am an, at an advantage in this fight. And uh, that's my goal now. I want to poison, well, not, not, not to be at an advantage, but my goal is now to poison and rot people and watch them wither away because I love status builds. I always have, always will. I used to run a status build in um, Dark Souls 3, uh, especially for my uh, swamp um, invasions. Cause that's all I did in Dark Souls 3, honestly. Most of my PvP was in the Swamp. I love that Gank Swamp. I love fighting Gank Swads in the Swamp. It was it was so gritty, it was so fun, and uh, yeah, as I mentioned in the last video, these invasions kind of remind me of that time. I don't know at what level this feeling is going to change, but uh, good, the good times were then. The good times were then. And uh, yeah, I'm trying not to rely too hard on bleed for this build. I'm really trying to rely on all the other status effects. And uh, it's working out great for me, especially at this point in time. With the uh, plus two somber weapons and level 30, I'm gonna be bringing them to plus five before I uh, hit the level 50 cap. I am, uh, for those of you who are wondering, it's like, well, Buppo, how are you, how are you like matching your levels to your weapon level for the evasion range? I have been following Ouroboros guide. Ouroboro posted a video about this and what the, uh, his general, like, and this this was well researched i do trust his uh, opinion on it and uh it was a collaborated with other like creators and members of the community so i think it's a really good resource and i might post a link in the description for you guys or maybe a comment uh you know if you guys want it uh let me know and i'll post it somewhere in this video or somewhere you know in our community so you guys can have access to that information as well but yeah i matched his uh, invasion chart range essentially and I've been using that for um, making this build and making sure that uh, I still get invasions 
um, throughout the game. So technically, my weapons are under leveled. I'm not doing enough damage based on that uh, on that charge. And as I say that, I chunk this man for um, a lot of damage. But that's the thing. Um, the builds that I'm going against, most of the time, they're not finished. This is still the start of the game, right? So the enemy, like I'm in Stormvale Castle, so my enemies are not necessarily going to be optimized. They're not necessarily going to be fighting at an advantage. And I'm using all the knowledge and tools that I know to stay as optimized as possible throughout the entire making of this series. So currently, this is an unfinished build, yes, but it's as good as it can be until I get to that point. So I think the build is actually going to really start to shape up and start looking more like its final product. I'm assuming around level 50 when I'm going to be able to actually cast spells and stack damage with talismans on top of um, the, the Regalia of Equade, I believe is the actual name of the weapon. I may have actually gotten it right this time. But uh, to keep things simple, I'm going to call it the Red Spin Straight Sword because that's a funnier name to me. And yeah, we're going to be using the Red Spin uh, Straight Sword. And then we're... Oh, this that was my favorite finish, by the way. That was dope as fuck. You cannot lie. That was not like a cool finish to a fight. That was dope as hell. Okay? All right. I'm glad we all acknowledge that. 10 out of 10. You know, pat on the back. Uh, moving on to the next invasion. So Stormvale Castle, once again. It seems that all my invasions at level 31, I believe my character is. But yeah, level 31, uh, we're going to be bringing them up to level 50 because of the um, weapon range up until when we get plus 6 somber weapons, plus 6 to like plus 8, I think it's going to be 50 to 80 plus or something like that. But right now we are, we only have plus 2 weapons, we are only level 31 or 33, something like that. Hey, we got another cameo jumping in. Um, I forgot to turn off Steam while I was playing this, or Steam notifications, so you guys are going to have to bear with me on that one. But uh, yeah, so uh, the build is as optimized as it can be. Um, it's not overpowered, I'm not one-shotting people, but um, ever since the update where uh, damage for PvP is separate from damage for PvE, I have found a lot more success in my invasions. I, I genuinely have. It's grittier, the fights are longer, the fights are better, you actually have to engage with the mechanics of the game. And, uh, I don't know, just made me feel better of not being uh, constantly one-shot all the time. I mean, it, it still does happen from time to time, but that's when you have, like, the host with his phantom who uh, is a new game plus seven, and he's just helping his buddy out through the game. Anyways, here it is, guys. The final invasion of the video. The invasion that looked very similar to the first one. The first one was in Stormvale Castle. It was outside the gates. But, uh, this one, this last one, Seems to be in the other place where I keep getting invasions, in this specific room. So we're in a 3v1 scenario. Uh, the gang squad is running different weapons. A thrusting sword, a spear, and a um, shield. Thrusting sword man is done. We got lucky with uh, our little um, NPC friend. And now uh, great sword man is about to fight. He's doing his thing. Um, almost got him there. That was a clutch heal from my great sword homie there. But uh, also, I, almost, I wish that would have hit. That would have been a finisher, too. But here we go. Oh, and if you guys are wondering, Buffo, why are you doing so much damage when you use uh, jump attacks? It's because I have the claw talisman. So I have that talisman that gives you a jumping attack damage. Also, I thought I, ha I was doing the sleep sword attack there. Uh, and instead, my brain just stopped as I was charging the, uh, the red spin sword. And I'm like, hold on. What's happening? And uh, here, this is what I was actually trying to do. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, look at this. These invasions are gritty. They're fun. Um, my man could be using a bit more health. Uh, this guy's using the shield poke very well to his advantage. Uh, nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. He's not doing it in a toxic way. I think it is just genuinely his playstyle. And he's mixing it up, too, so he's playing well. And again, I broke the shield stance. I could have gotten the crit, but that's not what we're going for. That's not what we need. We need this fucking phantom dead. Finally, the phantom goes down. Okay. So here we are, shield man, he's got it up, he's ready, he's in the 1v1 scenario, and uh, I like to play with my food, so here we go, because he hides behind that shield a lot, I'm going to poison him, I'm going to make him suffer slowly. So we got him poisoned, and now it's time for the Scarlet Rod, we are, we are giving him a slow and painful death sentence. He is desperate, he's going for the fairy shield, and I'm not going for those crits, I'm being cruel this time. And we kill him with the poison Scarlet Rod, 10 out of 10, hope you guys enjoyed this. But uh, yeah, that's all we, the time we had for today. And uh, remember to like and subscribe. Take care.
subscribe to Big Bubbles YouTube. You must. Or tickle your toes. I will.